This episode is sponsored by Zen. So I want to remind you about the purple iPhone 12 giveaway. I've got two units for subscribers like you. All you gotta do is leave your Twitter handle down in the description and that's it. This is your last chance to win one of these. I have the iPhone 12 purple regular and iPhone 12 purple mini. Ah oh, yeah, it's very nice. And that's really what you're paying for right there. Oh my goodness gracious, that is a... Woo, that was close. Welcome to the Mega Apple Unboxing Extravaganza. This is a bunch of new products from Apple. We have a new Apple TV. We have a new Magic Keyboard. We have the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And of course we have the ultra slender iMac, the new 24 inch iMac, which uh, comes in like a wild number of colors. The unit I have in front of me here is in the blue, which I think is the most popular color. Anyway, I'm curious to check it out. Let's kick it off with actually one of the smaller items, this Apple TV. I actually use Apple TV a lot. I have maybe four of these set up at my house, different locations, well, the old model. And Apple finally made some improvements here that uh, might just save my life because uh, the remote on the current model has kind of drove me crazy a little bit. Like it's just with the touch pad and it's very easy to lose. This one is still easy to lose, but they just, they changed it. They made it a little bit taller. They changed the input method. Also, we have 4K HDR on here. You have the TV calibration stuff. Uh, look at this, a little advertising on the back for Disney Plus, Netflix. The competitors, of course, starting with Apple TV Plus. AirPlay is a nice thing to have from your other Apple devices. It works really well. Uh, onto your Apple TV. If you have any of their audio products as well, like the HomePod, I don't have any of those. I do have AirPods. Well, anyway, those things interact well also. So this comes in two different storage configurations. This is the 64 gigabyte model. This is an expensive streaming device. It's kind of unnecessary unless you're going to take advantage of some of that AirPlay stuff because otherwise you could look at the likes of Roku and such that have more budget friendly options, but this is gonna have your typical Apple finish and integration to it. Here is the Apple TV itself. That is a very nice, you see there's no peel like that on the Roku. That's a, that's like a couple hundred dollar peel right there as far as I'm concerned. Actually the back of it, it all looks very similar. We have our power port, an HDMI port, and then you have uh, for wired networking, you have an ethernet port as well. Another peel for you. Oh yeah, it's very nice. And that's really what you're paying for right there. You see that big Apple logo right down there. So glossy black on the outside, matte black on the top. This is what I am most curious about, the new remote. So it is fatter. Imagine that, Apple making a product fatter, not slimmer, and it's more robust to hold on to. It's uh, confidence inspiring, dare I say. You have your microphone button over here on the side, a dedicated power button up at the top. Uh, you have almost an iPod-like click wheel situation going on. So still touch sensitive, but just different than the pad that they currently have. And then your key buttons are over here as well for volume, a mute switch, and a back button. It still charges over lightning. So you're gonna have to have these cables around and accessible. That's a little bit annoying, but uh, that's how they do it. And some were surprised that this remote didn't feature any tracking similar to AirTags or AirTag integration, because these are things that get misplaced quite frequently. Uh, I'm actually considering with the later case brand to maybe make something for this remote to make it trackable. Uh, I'm not committing to that, but I'm gonna look into it. Uh, either way, it's already an improvement. I think it's gonna be tougher to lose just because it's fatter. Anyway, also in the package, we have, uh, what is this? That's your power cable right there. And do they give you a lightning cable or are they just expect, oh, they do, okay. So you get a USB to lightning cable. Couldn't remember if they expected you to have that and that's just gonna be used to charge up the remote. All right, now, since this is an unboxing extravaganza, it is time for us to move on to our next item. I think I'm gonna go to the Magic Keyboard, the new Magic Keyboard. This one was kind of a controversial item because Apple came out and said, hey, if you have the old 12.9 uh, inch Magic Keyboard from the last generation iPad Pro, then the new iPad Pro, if you upgrade to this one right here, it's crazy that this box is, they feel like they're the same way. If you pick up the new iPad Pro because you want a new display and an M1 chip and all that, you're gonna need a new Magic Keyboard as well because it doesn't really work on the old one. And people were like, 
What, what are you talking about? I spent so much money on the old Magic, I gotta upgrade both every single time. Yes, in order to accommodate this new display, it got ever so slightly fatter, enough so to throw off the tolerances on the previous version of the Magic Keyboard. That's what this one here aims to fix. It also comes in white, so it's a little bit annoying. I saw some people saying it kind of does work, but it's just when you close it, everything, the fit and finish is not quite there if you use the new iPad Pro 12.9 with the old Magic Keyboard. What this does is, it kind of gives you a laptop-like experience with your iPad Pro. This one, on the other hand, looks like it'll work with third, fourth, and fifth generation. So this, this is the more accommodating version. It will be backwards compatible because it has a little bit more room to work with. Now, the one thing I should mention, because I've I tried to go iPad only, ditch the laptop. By the time you get the keyboard case and everything going, it can get surprisingly heavy like beyond MacBook Air territory. And so that's something to just prepare yourself for. You are no longer iPad light once you've added this particular component. But if you need touch input, if you love having an iPad and you want a keyboard to sort of give you the uh, laptop-like experience, well, this is a way to do it. This white looks nice right now. I'm a little bit concerned long-term because it looks so clean, oh so clean at the moment. Can it stay looking oh so clean? I don't know. All right, so it has a couple different couple different positions to be in, I guess really only two. That's open, that's closed. The iPad will fit on the inside of it. This little section here, you plug in USB type C. The metallic connectors here will make sure to pass power onto the iPad itself. It's a chiclet style keyboard. There is a trackpad there little trackpad, the quick brown fox. Now, because it's laying flat on the table, it's got a pretty sturdy feel to it. You don't get any type of uh, angle, typing angle. It's very flat, but because it's so thin, it means your palms can kind of rest on the table and not feel any type of harsh edge. So that's a nice little thing. Cool, so silver, it's got some silver and some white. How is the bottom of this not gonna get messed up though? We place that down on the table. I don't know, I feel like it's got to at some point. All right, let's leave that there for a moment and get on to the iPad itself. So the M1 chip uh, makes its debut in an iPad. And obviously from a performance standpoint, this thing is gonna be on another level. You're talking about the same chip that you're seeing in all those MacBooks that people are loving and surprised by the performance associated. Now you're seeing it in the iPad. The other big thing here is the display. It's now got all these little dimming, local dimming sections attempting to mimic OLED performance. And actually before I even get into this box, there's some people that are saying it's not quite on that OLED level. They're seeing blooming and things like this, but that's for the pixel peeping at a later date. Either way, uh, probably a stopover technology for Apple. They, I would assume they're gonna get to OLED at some point. Okay, so here is the iPad Pro 12.9. This is the space gray color. I mean, if you've seen the iPad Pro, incredibly thin and light. Uh, this one doesn't feel any fatter to me. That goes to show you just how small those differences are. One of the things I like about this tablet is uh, the multimedia performance for me just sitting back watching content. They put a lot of attention into the speaker performance, which you don't see all the time in crazy slim and thin devices, but this one actually sounds good to watch content for extended periods of time. You have obviously your pen input can live up there if you want to, or pencil if you want to use the Apple Pencil. Uh, we have our camera unit over here, Apple making all, all sorts of conversation around the AR future utilizing their camera units. Oh, USB type C connector, thank goodness. It's something to remind you, one of the few devices, the iPad Pro supporting USB type C from Apple, at least mobile devices, I guess the laptops do. All right, also inside the package, a little bit of paperwork. Here's your power brick, as well as your type C to C cable to charge it up. Very nice. Let me boot this up real quick. I wanna check out this display. It should be more vibrant, no doubt about that. Oh, another thing I should mention at this point, this is the 12.9 inch model. It got the new display, but the 11 inch model, which I've probably used more at this point, did not get the new display. So it's still the old technology, old IPS technology, though 
based on some of the uh, reports I'm seeing with this blooming stuff, maybe some people are gonna opt for the old tech. I don't see any problems with it now. The way to experience the effect some are complaining about is on a uh, black background with a bright, some bright text or something. That's how many are picking up on it, but you kind of need the right conditions to see it. We'll get there in a moment. All right, let's do a purple iPhone real quick. Why don't we do the standard purple iPhone 12 since we're covering so much ground. Now I'm gonna keep this package nice and tidy for someone who might win this purple iPhone because I'm gonna give this one away. Oh, wow then, that is a very, Hard, what is it, like a lavender thing going on? It's a lighter purple, as far as purples go. Of course, you have purple around the frame as well. This is a bit darker, the metallic portion, and then you have this pastel style purple over here. I think, I mean, it's kind of a nice look to it. It's noteworthy because Apple wouldn't normally uh, take a moment at a different product launch and be like, oh yeah, we got an iPhone in another color. I suppose they've done that sort of with the red stuff in the past, but just, hey, we got purple, check out our purple. Anyway, that's the purple. If you were curious inside the package, type C to lightning and well, you know the story, no charge brick, no nada, but somebody is actually gonna win this. So good luck to those of you playing, all the subscribers out there who want a shot at it, make sure to leave your Twitter handle down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have two of them to give away, one purple 12, one purple 12 mini. All right, I think it's about time in this extravaganza to make our way to the biggest unit. Oh, baby, the new iMac, which is, well, it's uh, quite a departure from the old one. This is the newest item of the new items. I haven't used an iMac extensively in a while, but I'm very familiar with them. I've used them in the past. I used to repair them. I used to upgrade them in previous businesses. Um, so I do have a history with iMacs. Uh, this is the first time it's one size fits all. There used to be a big one and a small one. Maybe they'll do a pro version eventually, but for now it's 24 inches. You can see the uh, Thunderbolt ports as well as the Type-C ports. Very simple IO over here. There is a ethernet port, but it is on the power brick portion of the power cable. That's right, there is a brick. It's no longer integrated. Another topic of conversation, I saw my pal Detroit Borg talking about that, how he would rather have an integrated power supply, but this thing is so crazy slim. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. I don't need a knife because we have the famous pull tab. Here we go, you ready, Mo? Ooh, that is very satisfying. Now again, this is the blue model, but it comes in about a thousand colors. Oh, I don't know. There's silver, there's orange, there's yellow. There's so many different colors. Actually, this is supposed to open up the other way. Oh, that's the other item that many are mentioning. The chin, the no logo chin. I, I mean, people were surprised by it. They say, okay, why you got a chin? First of all, it's 2021, your Apple. And then second of all, if you're gonna have the chin, where's the Apple logo? We're used to seeing it. I think in it with this, device, they kind of did the opposite of what they did with the remote. On the remote, they're like, okay, let's make it fatter. We don't care, it can be fatter, it's fine. This one was like, let's compromise whatever necessary in order to make it as slim as possible. I should probably check the spec on this. Eight core CPU, eight core GPU, uh, AGB unified memory and 512 storage. I think that's the base model. You can spec it higher or you can wait for the pro one because they'll probably do that if you plan on video editing or and whatnot. All right, holy big box going on. Oh, cool. See the way that happened there? This is the closed position. I pull here and it triggers the movement of those other pieces. Bang, bang. Oh man, it's like a giant iPad on a stick. I think I said that on an episode of Lou later. It actually, that's exactly what it is. It's a giant iPad on a stick. Just, I could just, like a little briefcase. It's not that light though. It's tiny, but a lot of metallic components. It feels substantial. All right, also in the package. Ooh, look at the accessories in here. Color match keyboard, typical Apple styling, but now we have the fingerprint scanner. So white keys on a bluish, aluminum bluish backing, very slim, charging over lightning once again. Let me just crack into this right now, right, don't I? Kind of nice to have the Touch ID right on the keyboard. People on the desktop feeling left out. Everybody unlocking their computers on the laptops just with the fingerprint. Okay, now we can do that there. 
That's a nice little touch. Ooh, look at the stylish cables as well. Just pop that out. Braided. USB-C to lightning. I guess it's for this. It matches the whole motif. Very nice. Same goes for the power cable. Now, as mentioned, they had to put the power brick onto the outside. They weren't able to fit it into the actual construction in order to keep it super slim. But the benefit there, I don't even know, am I in the camera right now? I'm just talking. Am I anywhere? My head's cut off, right? Okay, I should probably just get this stuff off here. This, this, this. Look at this. It's like mastery of product packaging. A little slot for everything, just folding paper in magical ways. Lovely. I think I got everything out of that package. Now, before I get to the main unit, I just want to cover all of the accessories. Your Apple stickers are in here. The cable that I mentioned. Am I supposed to just rip it? Oh, there we go. It's like a baby blue North Carolina Tar Heels type look to it. The mouse is also, I don't use, I don't ever use these, but certainly stylish. The power cable. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the power cable, power brick. So to make the device super slender, you got to put the power brick on the outside. That's a hotly debated topic. But Apple did something interesting with this. They were able to integrate an Ethernet jack so that you can still have a wired internet connection, which many people with a desktop want. And you can have it on the floor so you have fewer cables going up to your unit. So that's kind of a nice little touch. They also created this magnetic connector. So if it was to get kicked, uh, it would pop out, presumably. Uh, I don't know, I'll give it a little test. I'll give it a little run, see if that's how it works. That seems less important on a desktop compared to a laptop where we've seen MagSafe before, but who knows where people are gonna set these up. Uh, it's a nice little thing to have in the event that that happens and you don't have to watch your iMac slam to the ground but yes to get something that thin you gotta have a power brick on the outside it's uh that's just the nature of the thing at the moment there's also an extension cable included so you can get a little bit further away from the wall this is standardized even though apple's is a little bit flashy standardized three pin connector into here so you get a little more room to work with okay so here is the new imac as mentioned Behold the slenderness of it all. It's more unboxing discovery here. We pull those tabs and then we pull down and then we pull up and it all unfolds. Wow. Okay. There's a giant Apple logo on the back, so certainly we're missing it on the front, but we get it on the back. This is a this is appeal. This is definitely this qualifies as appeal. Woo! Wow, that is strange. <laughs> In person, logoless front is a bit of a shock to the system. If you've ever looked at an iMac before, there's usually a giant logo there. And I didn't expect it to be noticeable to me. Now, I'm actually not gonna complain about it. I kinda like the minimal approach to it, but the chin does feel a little strange. It has the color, has the, the baby blue, but then you have the remainder with this white bezel. It's a kind of a funny look, but the takeaway for me is more around the physical characteristics, the dimensions, than it is around any individual color. Just how, I mean, like, let me just hold up. This is an iPad Pro, the new 12.9. If I hold that up, I mean, you can see it ain't all that different. It's not, it's probably two, two of these max. It's very slim for an entire desktop computer. It's slimmer than I think any monitor I own at the moment. And it's got an M1 in there. I don't know exactly what that was protecting. And then I got more plastic over here. And now we see the true blue coloring. That's a very nice blue. You know what? I can get, I can get behind that blue. That is a dark, it's a deep, it's a dark and a deep blue. Oh, and look at this, another pull tab around the outside. Many pulls. All very nicely protected. Woo, that was close. All right, so as far as ports, 
It's just four type C connectors, two of them Thunderbolt. It'd be nice to see a little bit of versatility. I don't know, maybe SD card slot, something like that. But anyway, simple approach, large power button over here. Let's check out this magnetic connector. Ooh, that's it. How easily does it come out? Hmm. Not that easily. So I do not think it's a kick factor at all. Ooh, that's a strong magnet. It's definitely not a kick factor. Oh my goodness gracious, that is a... It's a strong magnet they did in there. I'll tell you what is a strong magnet they did in there. So it's just a convenience thing, I suppose, because of the way you have this small cable gap, novelty of a magnetic connection point. They could have probably just done a some sort of barrel connector. It would have been possible, but this is certainly more fun, especially when it's color matched. Oh, and they also reworked the front facing camera. They've, uh, they claim to have better video conferencing, which is a, an area that's kind of lagged previously. So people are doing a lot more of that. You can see the microphone array up on the top over there as well. Very deep blue, certainly. All right, so I went and collected some older versions of these refresh products in order to do a quick comparison, see if I could spot the differences. Uh, well, obviously with the remote, it's pretty easy to spot the differences. Now, this is the thing I had to do back in the olden days. Actually, I still do this to this day. I put this super flimsy cheap case onto the Apple TV remote. So it's slightly less likely to get lost because in my house, it's madness. There's many people in there. They do what they want. And then I got to go hunt this thing down. And I got kind of got sick of that. So I purchased this thing off Amazon, but it's not the most fun to hold on to. And it actually doesn't really fit the remote all that well, but this makes it fatter. So it can't slide between the cushions as much. And I think this one also glows in the dark, but it obviously removes the aesthetic of the thing. Now, Apple went ahead and just made theirs fatter. So it's almost as fat as this one in the case now. And I'm sure part of that has to do I mean, it's not the components taking up the space. I'm sure part of that has to do with people requesting such a thing. And maybe the battery life is a little bit better. But anyway, that's your, I'm gonna take this back out. That's your design difference. This thing was just crazy slender. So taller, fatter, maybe ever so slightly more slender, but a much bigger remote. Now, the more important comparison here is right in front of me. This is the new 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro and the comparison, the closest comparison I had was the previous generation 11 inch accessible to me at the moment. Uh, this is the 11 inch iPad Pro previous gen, though they kept the same display technology into the current generation 11 inch. That one did not get the mini LED technology. So this is IPS versus uh, mini LED and for all the, uh, I mean, it's not even a controversy for all the conversation around the blooming uh, aspect, defect, the thing that people don't like about the uh, performance on the mini LED, or at least they've been pointing out on a, a black background. It is a superior technology from a contrast perspective. I don't know if you can see it, but to my eyes, this is more contrasty. It almost feels like OLED. Now, the only potential for problem that occurs is when you launch into something that happens to have a uh, really dark area pressed right up against a very bright area. Now, what happened on the old tech, because you had fewer dimming zones, is you would get a kind of grayishness to the entire black background near a particular section. Uh, in this case, people were noticing a glow around individual areas, almost like a spotlight sort of glow effect. Now this is emphasized when you have the lights off. If you're like watching a movie or something, you can see here, it's not really all that prevalent. Is it a little bit nitpicky? Yeah, to a certain extent, I understand these things are expensive. Everyone has a different take on how much that is going to impact or affect them. It's not OLED, but I can tell you just based on this brief comparison, it looks a lot more like OLED from a contrast perspective. And even with that blooming aspect for my use, I still would probably prefer it over the old tech, the old IPS display, which is just lacking a little bit of vibrance. OLED would be awesome. Maybe, uh, maybe next time around. Oh, by the way, I should mention, I don't know if I mentioned this, the keyboard case 
situation, another topic of conversation, because the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro, Apple said, hey, it doesn't really work with the old version of the Magic Keyboard case for the previous generation 12.9. I happen to have the old version over here. I don't know if they clarified later on. They said, well, it will work, but it's not exactly perfect. It's pretty close to perfect. Now, I can't speak to whether or not it's a safe thing to do with your iPad. It doesn't quite click exactly as well. It's very tight tolerances, and this thing got ever so slightly fatter. But look at it in the old keyboard case. I mean, it's in there. I don't know if people are going to feel compelled to buy a whole new keyboard case as well when it's just slightly less precise on the fit, but I'll just show you the difference. So that one, it clicks down with a little bit less attitude, with a little bit less clamp. This one is just ever so slightly tighter. It's very subtle, but anyways, it's worth noting if you're in the market. Also, this white one is kind of terrifying to me. I'm starting to realize that as I slap it down on different surfaces. I can't imagine how this is gonna stay this color, but funny enough, even if you look at the old darker color, it's all kinds of wear marks and stuff. I really wish Apple would put little feet on the bottom of this keyboard case for uh, durability purposes, but I, I presume they went for slimness at all costs. Okay, the last major piece of hardware here we have is the new iMac. This is truly a style piece. Some have called it a style icon. That's what Kirk said. It's a super slim, nice little desktop with a tremendous amount of horsepower considering how tiny it is. I mean, it was the same thing we could say about the MacBook Air, current generation MacBook Pro, even the current Mac Mini, anything with M1 in it. It's, it's just, it's wild what they're able to pull out of it in these super slim form factors. I was thinking of mounting, mounting this up mostly as a monitor, just because, I mean, it's hard to even find a monitor that's this slim. And then you start to look at the prices. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't pay a lot of attention to this iMac. I wasn't really in the market for it outside of this channel and making this video. But when you start to compare it to other displays that are as pixel dense as this and have no computer and have no M1 inside, you're like, oh my goodness, you got an LG product, it's over $1,000 for a 5K display at 27 inches. Now this is not quite 5K, but it's very close to 5K and it's in 24 inches. So we gathered around, we we're looking at it like, damn, that's some, that's a pretty dense display over there. It's pretty nice to look at, I'll tell you what. It is compelling almost from the display standpoint alone it is a very nice display experience. Uh, it's still a tough purchase, I think, for matter, many individuals. I don't know, everybody in here, for example, because cost-wise, you're looking at something close to any of those laptops. And then you're like, well, wouldn't you, if you had the same amount of power, wouldn't you want something that's portable? But the it turns out that the conversation, the competition here is actually more around display. If you want a nice display to go with your M1, well, that's how you get here. It's a little less portable, but it's still, I mean, kind of portable. It's super, it's one cable into it. Maybe some company's gonna engineer a case and then Kirk can just like slap this in there and, and all of a sudden be editing wherever he goes. I remember the old days at CES where some people would actually pack these things up. Would, would, would find some sort of specialized bag for it because they wanted a bigger display to edit on once they got to the hotel room. So I'm sure some people come buy these uh, I say my main takeaway in this brief experience with it is uh, being surprised by the caliber of the display. 4480 by 2520. I would say my one, uh, I don't want to even, I mean, it's a criticism, but it's kind of a foregone thing. Like it's obvious this is direct, the direction things are going, but I just wish there was like one USB-A port just for some old peripherals, audio interfaces, all kinds of devices that still exist out there that utilize it. Because it's so clean to begin with that if you start going with dongles and docks, you kind of spoil the product. So just, I don't know, maybe one USB-A or even you've got the ethernet jack down on the power brick, maybe throw a USB-A down there as well. I don't know, it's kind of too crazy. All right, anyway. The other thing here that's kind of nice to have, I still don't know why it's no face unlock because you have the face unlock on the phone and the iPad and all the other products. And Windows has the face unlock with the uh, Windows Hello. That'd be really cool for to have a couple components there. Face ID, login, wonderful stuff. Anyway, it's not there, but we have the fingerprint scanner, which is a bonus. 
and an improvement for a desktop. Desktop users feeling left out. Well, now we sleep it and wake it up and touch ID and we're in. It's nice. I take it. It's a nice little bonus. We go to sleep, wake back up, touch ID or password. Touch ID is more convenient and we're unlocked. So it's a nice little touch. There you have it. It is a mega massive Apple unboxing video featuring the new delicious iMac M1 iMac in blue available in a wide variety of colors. If blue is not suitable for you, we have the new Apple TV that was featured as well with the new remote, which is somehow maybe the most exciting thing for me because of how irritating the old one was. So that's kind of nice. Obviously, there's also the new iPad, M1 iPad, so much power in an iPad, no Mac OS over here, but man, if you're into iOS, this is, well, or a tablet in general, this is gonna get things done for you, that's for certain. And the display is an improvement, although any, any new technology is not without its downsides. We have the white keyboard case as well. And then don't forget the purple iPhones uh, even the one that I unboxed here on this video. That's why I was waiting to give them away because I did want to include it as part of this group of products since they all were announced at the same event. But these are going to be given away to two lucky subscribers here on Unbox Therapy. Just go ahead and leave your Twitter username down in the comments of this video for your chance to win. And of course, make sure you're subscribed. So good luck. You may be the new owner of a purple iPhone 12 or 12 mini. This episode has been sponsored by Zen. Zen is a shopping card connected with an app made to bring Zen ease to online shopping. There are also zero fees when you are shopping online, especially through foreign stores. And as you see inside the Zen app, you can keep your currency in all kinds of different denominations. You can see here, I've got euros, Mexican, there's some Japanese yen, USD is in there as well. Like it's also an exchange app. I can quickly exchange between currencies when it's beneficial for me. If I know I'm gonna be traveling somewhere or purchasing goods in a different currency, this shows your transactions between currencies by date. It also shows you the effective exchange rate for those transactions. So here we can see euros into USD at 0.8492 euros per USD. Up to 15% of the money you spend will return to your account in the form of instant cashbacks. And if you click on offers here, you can see all the different retailers and then their connected cashback if you use Zen. So these are all independent partnerships. You can see AliExpress on there. You get one year of extra warranty for electronics when you buy with the Zen MasterCard. This is simple, just purchase using the card and then the warranty is extended. So you have the manufacturer warranty and then one extra year on top of that. You also get Zen shopping protection. So if something goes wrong with your purchase or transaction, then they're gonna follow up on your behalf and rectify the situation so you don't have to handle that yourself. There's also a physical version of the card. So even places where you can't use your phone to pay, you could use the old fashioned card as well. And it's kind of a nice minimal design they've got in collaboration with MasterCard. So Zen will work both online and offline. Of course, you can just use the app for those online purchases, and then you can pick up your physical card if you wanna use the Zen MasterCard offline.